Hi friends, welcome to English Study Point. Today here in this video lecture, I am going to discuss with you about Toru Dutt's works as well as her biography in this video lecture. Now I am starting this video lecture first by telling you about her personal details. So she was born in 4 March 1856 and died on 30 August 1877 and was born to a Bengali family but later on she converted to Christianity. Dutt's family was one of the first among Calcutta families to be strongly influenced by the British colonial missionary presence and she was by profession an Indian poet who used to write her works in so many different kinds of languages such as English, French and also she writes her works in German language as well. She died of a premature death but she had produced excellent poetries during her lifetime and made a mark in literature in spite of her premature death. She died at the age of 21 after blazing a trait of brilliance in early Indo-Anglican poetry. She was included among founding figures of Anglo-Indian literature alongside Henry Louis Vivian de Rosio, Manmohan Ghosh, Sarojini Naidu. She remained in Calcutta for a fixed time frame till November 1869 and after this time period passed away, she decided to travel with her sister Aru to explore different parts of countries. So she decided to travel France Italy and then uh, to England. When she went to France or when she traveled in France for the first time in her life she joined school and after joining school in France she developed intimacy with French language and after that she decided to write her works also in French language as well. And she was compared to John Keats and was called as Keats of uh, Indo-English literature because she uh, like Keats died at a very young age of consumption like him and uh, end of both of them came slow and sad so that is why she was compared to John Keats and she was very much inspired by Rosio's nationalism and romantic elements so there are elements which we found in Rosio's uh, poetry and those elements are nationalism and romanticism so uh, after drawing inspiration from these elements she was also inspired by uh, a famous personality whose name is Derosio and in Derosio Toru have discovered a precedent whom she could follow and possibly excel and uh, in Toru Dutt's poetry there are so many themes and those themes are loneliness, longing, patriotism and nostalgia. She again and again keeps on remembering or presenting in her works memories which are related to her siblings. So that is why she is longing for her childhood to come back uh, in which she is enjoying her life with her siblings. So these are some themes which we found in her poetry. These are some other important facts related to Toru that she was a prodigy. Prodigy uh, in a sense she was extraordinarily intelligent and stood in comparison with John Keats and was called as Keats of Indo-English literature and was described by many critics as a kind of phenomena without parallel because no other poet can match her capabilities. She being so erudite means she possessed extreme or tremendous knowledge in herself and was able to describe her emotions in a language other than her own means she was able to or capable of describing her feelings and emotions uh, by describing her emotions in a uh, eastern as well as western language eastern language is a language which is native language and western language includes french german and english language and she was the first woman writer in the history of indo-anglican literature because she was writing at a time when no other woman uh, dared to write her feelings by describing her feelings in a work and she was the first who took initiative of writing and describing her feelings in her works and there was a biography written by Harihar Das in 1921 related to Toru Dutt and that biography is Life and Letters of Toru Dutt. Then the finest flower of Indian Renaissance. She was described by critics as a finest flower of Indian Renaissance that began her journey of writing works along with Raja Ram Mohan Roy. So she also began her journey of writing works 
at a time when Raja Ram Mohan Roy started to write. So that is why the finest flower of Indian Renaissance that began with Raja Ram Mohan Roy. And other critics describe her as the fragile blossom. She was very soft that she withered so fast. Withered so fast in a sense that she was so much fragile and because of her such fragility or softness, she died at a very young age. And now I am letting you note her works that she wrote during her lifetime. So I am telling you uh, about her works in a chronological order. So in the year 1874, she wrote two essays, one on the French poet Le Conte de Leslie and another on Henry de Rosio, who is who was described as the father of Indo-Anglican poetry. So she wrote or she began her journey of writing her works by first writing two essays in the year 1874. So she wrote first essay on French poet whose name was Le Conte de Leslie and another on Henry de Rosio. And these essays published in the uh, Bengal magazine. So these essays, these two essays was published in the Bengal magazine. In the year 1875, Torudat gave two speeches on Victor Hugo and M. Theors. And these two speeches delivered in the French uh, parliament under the title A Scene from Contemporary History and after giving these speeches Toru that was assessed as a linguist prodigy and the translations are evidence of Toru Dutt's linguistic abilities and she was described as a person or a woman who performed the tricks of a magician by deftly handling three languages. She does not merely translate but transcreates and in the process of transcreation she reveals herself. So uh, you can see here that how she was described by people who are judging her speech. So uh, again I am repeating that she was described as a person or a woman who performed the tricks of a magician by deftly handling three languages she does not merely translate but transcreates and in the process of transcreation she reveals herself moving on to her another work which was a kind of volume of french poems published in the year 1876 titled as a sheaf gleaned in french fields so uh, this was a kind of volume of French poems and contains 173 poems in total translated from French into English out of which 8 poems was translated by her elder sister Aru. So before publication of this work she had published several translation and literary discussion. So this is a uh, volume of French poems she had translated into English with Saptahik Sambad Press of Bhavanipur which is situated in Calcutta, India in 1876. And when this a volume of poetry published, it got attention by, a, by an English poet, author and a critic whose name is Edmund Goose. In 1877, he reviewed it quite favorably in the Examiner. Examiner was a weekly paper founded by Lay and John Hunt in the year 1877. So, this volume of poetry seek attention of an, uh, of an English poet, author and a critic whose name was Edmund Goose and he quite favorably reviewed in Examiner which was a weekly paper founded by Lay and John Hunt in 1808 and after publication of this volume of uh, French poems, several different editions also appeared in different different years so in the year 1878 Indian edition of this same volume of uh, poetry appeared then again in the year third uh, 1880 third ed edition by Kegel Paul of London appeared so you can see that that was not able to see success of her works so how much this work was 
successful that uh, it got appeared in two or so many editions in different different languages appeared of this same work now at the time of torudat's death she left behind two unpublished novels and list of those two unpublished novels are first one is the Un unfinished bianca and another title of the same particular novel is the young spanish maiden and this was published posthumously in the year 1871 this was a kind of romantic novel written originally in english and was published in a serial form in calcutta's bengal magazine and thought to be first novel in french by an it indian an author then uh, this novel bianca borders closely on toru dat's own life and we see there is a character whose name is alonzo garcia and in this novel he is a kind of spanish immigrant living in england with his two daughters her most favorite daughter is inez who died but garcia alonzo garcia is returning from the cemetery with his another daughter who is 18 years old and her name is bianca who do is less favored by alonzo garcia is more spirited of the two so uh, be, l there are two daughters first one is inez and another one is bianca but um, alonzo garcia favors inez but in reality bianca is more spirited than inez then garcia is forlorn and anxious and agitated because bianca is now equally his support and his burden too then she is free spirited woman bold and of to walk she is of dark complexion attracted by lord moor the most eligible bachelor in the neighborhood then bianca's father and lord moor's mother oppose the blossoming friendship on the ground that a marriage between the two would not be possible uh, because uh, if they marry so there is a uh, kind of crossing of barriers of race as well as class so this novel tries to depict extensive description or gives extensive description uh, about bianca's illness and her depressed state of mind and bianca's depressed state of mind represents that of or resembles that of toru dat's own depression so she was also in a state of depression during the time when she was longing for her siblings and they at that time were not present in front of her eyes so she was also longing at the and also missing them when they are no more in this world so toru dat's depression Uh, can be equated to bianca's depression so toru dat is trying to create a character who resembles feeling as that of toru dat and that character is bianca it can novel written by toru dat and was published posthumously after her death in the year 1879 by d dear and titled as le journal de metamorphoses de ours and was written in french language in a form of diary so in this novel she is trying to portray a character whose name is marguerite de ours she is when this novel opens she is living in a convent but after some time she decides to change her mind and leaves the convent after spending many happy years there and joins her parents to celebrate her 15th birthday then on her birthday she meets friends she had known in her childhood and those uh, names of those childhood friends are madame gozobel and her daughter the widowed countess of pino raven and her two sons tunois and gaston a young officer louis lefevre often who is described in this novel as often son of old friend of margaret parents come to visit uh, margaret parents then margaret passes her days in walks with her father in care of her domestic pets and visiting the poor and old in the neighboring village then she secures a place for one of the village girls whose name is janet as lady's maid to the countess at her chateau and is accorded a warm welcome there then margaret parents want her to marry uh, marry louis lefevre when the young officer solicits her she refuses him falling in love with count dunois and the countess is very happy then dunois and gaston both uh, fall in love with a village girl whose name is janet then deranged by passion dunois shoots her brother gaston on regaining her uh, his sanity dunois becomes aware of his crime and also of 
Margaret love for him. Then Dunois is sentenced to death uh, to fifteen year, uh, years of hard labor as a punishment of killing his own brother, whose name is Gaston. Afflicted by all these uh, evils which is uh, revolving around her, Margaret falls seriously ill, and she is deciding to, or she is lingering, that she is. Uh, deciding to kill herself, uh, but what happens is on her discovery, she learns that Dunois has committed suicide in another fit of insanity, and the Countess has lost her mental stability as a consequence. Then Louis Lefevier again visits Margaret's parents during her convalescence and she yields to his steadfast love and to her parents then after margaret uh, got married to this louis lefevier she is giving birth to a child when she is giving birth to a child she passed away so here this novel ends and this is second novel written by toru dutt now this was a kind of ballad published posthumously by Kagan Paul after the death of Toru Dutt in the year 1882 titled as Ancient Ballads and Legends of Hindustan. So by publishing this work she is trying to enshrine what she had learned of her country from her book and um, also from her native people. Her ballads was a great beginning in Indo-Anglican writing. Though a British by upbringing she was a harsh critic of the behavior of the British towards Indians and as a diligent reader of newspapers, she was aware of all the cases of injustice reported daily and they filled her with bitterness against the British. There was the care of a person who uh, was sentenced. There was a case of the person who was sentenced to three weeks of hard labor because she had defended himself when attacked by some dogs owned by an Englishman. Then Andres Toru wrote, You see how cheap the life of an Indian is in the eyes of an English judge. And also she wrote to her friend about another case in which some soldiers had killed English soldiers had killed nine Bengalis and wounded seven and mentioned several other instances of brutality. Then also she uh, is noticing or trying to make us notice, make readers notice that how 9,000 spent by Indian government on Edin, uh, on fireworks when the Duke of Edinburgh came to India in 1869. She questioned, was it not literally converting to smoke? She uh, disapproved pomp, extravagance, waste and feudal waste uh, of life uh, that and also she is trying to disapprove the kind of welcome uh, Indian government is giving to Duke of Edinburgh when he came to India in 1869 in, sp uh, in spite of the fact that Indian government knows that how brutal Indians are treated by these outsiders. Now these are some list of famous poems published by Torudat means written by Torudat. So first one is A Sea of Foliage, then another one is The Lotus, then Sita, uh, then Our Kajarina Tree, then other important poems written by Torudat. First one is Batu, My Vocation, The Sower, Christmas, The Broken Bell, The Young Captive. So this is another famous poetry by Torudat titled as Kajarina Tree and considered to be as her most famous poetry, a kind of autobiographical poem. In this poetry, she remembers her happy childhood days spent under it and her mem uh, memories with her beloved siblings. The poem is an example of Dutt's romanticism, sensuousness and advocation of childhood beauty. It is the symbol of time and eternity of her memories with her beloved siblings and this was a mark of her happy childhood. So uh, this poetry try, uh, tries to reflect about her happy childhood memories. And she remembers her siblings in this poetry. By writing this poetry, she is again trying to remember her siblings who died at a very young age. Uh, and their names are Aru and Abzu. And once they all played under this Kajarina tree and description of uh, that is written at the start of this poetry is um, like a huge python winding round and round. So here she is again this tree is a symbol of remembering their happy childhood memories. Then there is another poem written by Toru that which is Sita. It is uh, 
a kind of tense conversation which happened between Lakshman and his sister-in-law Sita. Sita, being worried about her husband, asked Lakshman to go anyway and bring him back to her. So it uh, it is about a woman who is alone in a dark room with her three children. The children are crying and the mother would like to comfort them, but she is crying too. Then Lotus. This is a poem by Toru Dutt. So this is another important poem by Toru Dutt. Here Lotus is described as a symbol of Indian culture and Hindu faith. And she begins this poem in a very conflicting way. Um, there is a conflict. There is a, uh, She is trying to showcase a conflict between rose and the lily flower. So God of love comes to flora. So there is a God who is uh, God of love who comes to flora. Flora is a goddess of flower and art. Ask, this god of love asked her to give him the most beautiful flower. Then Flora, who is goddess of flowers, give him lotus which has qualities of both flowers. So this poetry mainly depicts about lotus, importance of uh, lotus which holds very much importance in Indian culture as well as uh, reflection. It is a kind of reflection of Hindu faith.